Hello YouTube, I am Lightly Sultan, and welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to the continuing refresh of the U-Boat tutorials. Today we're going to go over hunting. I brought the boat down to periscope depth. I'll grab my radio officer, put him on the listening room, with one helper, to extend his range to the absolute maximum I can have it. Following that, I'm going to slow way down. Forward one, if not stop. To fully maximize your hydrophone range, I recommend dropping down near the 30 meter mark. With any luck, your hydrophone operator will pick up ships rather far away. Okay, we have picked up a target. As you can see here, it will be labeled as an incorrect target. Unit may be anywhere in a radius of 4 kilometers. To help cut down on that 4 kilometer radius, we can come up to periscope depth and have our skipper work the attack periscope. With any luck, he'll catch sight of the chimney smoke and narrow it down for us. Alright, we have actually gained sight on our target and the alarms begin. We'll have Mr. Watcher here quickly jump on the radio and call that into BDU. We'll also set an intercept course by right clicking on the blue icon here. Now that that's been sent, we'll have Mr. Watcher start warming up torpedoes for us. A torpedo that is not warmed has an extremely high chance of dudding when it hits target. Now there are many ways to set up how your torpedo calculations are going to work. As you can see, we already have 1% on two of our targets. That's because, since they are within sight and sound range of both our hydrophone operator and our skipper, our crew has begun automatic calculations. To maximize this, we'll click on the target ship, say this freighter here, click on the aiming reticule here in the bottom left, and apply both the skipper and our hydrophone operator to that one target. That will greatly speed up their calculations. To maximize this further, we can grab our other leader type, put him on the observation periscope, and add him to the equation. As you can see, our calculation is moving up very rapidly now. There are several ways to get a manual solution on your target. Let's go ahead and remove these officers. By grabbing our skipper, we can go into first person mode and find our targets. By hitting this button in the top center of the screen, we will center our periscope on our sub. All right, here we have this tanker. What we'll do is by either holding the E key or left clicking on it, we will lock it. As you can see here, we have its target card. You can do all of your calculations via the tools here on the left. We'll go ahead and open our identification book and find a silhouette that matches our target. This target appears to be an OL class tanker. We'll go ahead and recognize that. And the reason we want to recognize this ship before taking any more calculations is due to its mast height of 23.06 meters. This is very important when gaining distance on your target. To get your target's speed, move your periscope ahead of your target. Open your chronometer tool, and as the nose passes the center post, click start. Do not move your periscope at this time. As the aft of the ship passes the center post, we will stop the clock and set. The skipper believes this ship is going 6 knots. To get her course, we open the course tool and simply dial this arrow roughly to the direction it seems like the boat is heading in. For her distance, we'll open our statimeter tool and using the Q and E keys we will create a ghost image of our ship. And the purpose here is to line up the very tops of the masts with the waterline of your ghost image. Either up or down makes no difference. 
So we'll pick the tallest mast, which to us is the rear. And we can set it right there. There are many other ways to get these calculations done. We can go to our map. We can get our target's speed by scrolling on into the target, using the marker tool, place a point on our ship, right where the bow meets the water. If we grab our skipper and go into manual mode, we can pull up our stopwatch. When we hit start and allow the minute hand to go around exactly three minutes and 15 seconds, we will have this ship's speed in knots. This method works in a mixed unit measurement of knots and kilometers. The measurements are slightly different if you go full nautical or full metric. Three minutes and 15 seconds. By pausing the game now, we head back to our map and place another point on the nose of our ship. By using the ruler tool and measuring the distance between the points, we can safely say that with a distance of 560 meters traveled in the 3 minutes and 15 seconds, this ship is going 5.6 knots. To enter that, we simply select the target ship, select its speed, and type 5.6. The game will default to the closest full number. However, I assure you that those decimal points can make all the difference. So that's how we get speed via the map tools. That won't help us very much with the ship's course. To get the ship's angle on bow, we can pause time, grab our protractor tool, and place a point in the center of your boat. Then place a point in the center of the target ship. Your third point will be out through the nose of the ship which gives us an angle of 115 degrees. We can grab our skipper, back into first person mode, back to manual, open your course tool, and dial it to 115 degrees in the direction of travel. Remember, do not type the number in here. You must use the statimeter tool if you're using angle on bow. Any number that you type into this area will be the ship's true course. So how could we find true course? Well, we do have longitude and latitude lines on our map. We can grab our ruler tool and grab a line that is in roughly in the direction of travel of our target ship. Where the four lines intersect is where we want to place our first point. We'll draw it right on down to say here. That gives us an almost perfect north-south line. If we go ahead and draw through our target ship's path that we took when we got her speed, doing our level best to keep it as perfectly straight as we can, we see that we can make an intersection. If we grab our protractor tool, go from the absolute top of your north-south line to where the two lines that you've just drawn intersect, and out in the direction of travel, we get an angle of 145 degrees. A very important note, any ships traveling west, this number is a negative number. Any ships traveling east, it will be a positive number. And don't worry, you don't have to do any math. We simply select the ship, and in her angle box, type in negative 145 degrees. So we believe, according to the map, that this ship is on a true course of 215 degrees. So how could we get distance? Easily enough, we could use a ruler. Or if we were shooting at multiple targets, like I plan on doing, we could use the compass tool. So let's get out ahead of the ships a little bit so we can set up. Okay, and as we drift down to a stop, let's go ahead and place the center point of our compass on our ship. 
Since these targets are, are rather far away, we'll dial all the way out to the 2 kilometer mark. Okay. By drawing from the ship itself to the edge of the circle, we can get an even more accurate calculation of the ship's distance from us. We'll grab our tanker here, and if we felt like doing a little bit of math, 270 from 2000 is 1730. So we can go ahead and type that in. You have to type in the full amount in meters, not kilometers. If we were to try to say two kilometers and hit enter, the game thinks we are trying to say two meters, so we definitely don't want that. Let's go ahead and call it the 1730 that we believe it to be. Again, it will round to a number, don't worry too much about that. Now we got all of our calculations for this tanker. We can use all of the same calculations for the other target. By selecting it, the Empire Lambeth, we can go ahead and enter all the same information we plugged in for our tanker. For instance, we know she's going 5.6 knots. And we know she's on a course of 215 degrees. We'll grab our farthest target first, open up our torpedo launching bay, select a torpedo to flood. You must flood a torpedo before you can fire it. Down here you'll see that, at least for the T1 torpedo, we have control over its speed and depth. If we were to select two torpedoes, we would also have control over the dispersion of the torpedoes. This is the distance between the torpedoes hitting. If you are not 100% confident of your calculation, go ahead and keep your dispersion fairly high to maximize your chances of hitting the target. If you're very, very certain, say with a stationary target, you can go ahead and dial this down as far as you feel like. Depth is a bit of a sketchy animal. It can bug out from time to time. However, on certain ships, it is absolutely ideal when it comes to getting a one-hit kill. Let's go ahead, leave our depth at 1.5 meters. We'll unflood tube number two, because I don't feel like we need her. We're going to go ahead and leave speed at 30 knots. And fire. Throw a pause in here. Before you switch to another target, you must, must press the X right here to close the torpedo bay. If you do not, all torpedoes will go towards your last selected target. Go ahead and click our Empire. Open our torpedo bay. Now let's go ahead and flood tube number two. Let's set the depth from 1.5 meters down to two. We'll leave our speed at 30 knots. Go ahead and let it flood. And fire. We'll go ahead and begin moving closer to our targets. And with any luck, very shortly, we'll see some fireworks. Let's go ahead and give Mr. Watcher a little help in reloading the tubes for us. All right. By looking through the periscope, we'll hope to see the torpedo slam home. Fantastic. We've tagged the tanker. Roughly amidships, she's on fire. And we've struck our empire well ahead in the nose. Our calculation was off ever so slightly. Likely in her distance. Our tanker friend is going down. And now it's just a matter of mopping up what's left. Them's the brakes, Empire. Them's the brakes. At this point, you're going to want to go ahead and grab your radio officer, throw him back on the radio so we can call in our kills. If you do not call in your kills, you won't get paid. Alright folks, that does it for our quick little tutorial on torpedoes, solutions, and blowing stuff up. Until next time, I have been Lightly Salted. Thanks for tuning in. Bye now.